Sir, I appreciate the song service. Appreciate your participation in the song service. Prayer. I would turn this morning for an overall text. Over in 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel chapter 23. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, I'm going to endeavor to read verse 1 through verse 5 to begin with this morning. As we said, we certainly desire your prayers as we endeavor to look to God's Word. Now these be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me. And his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds. As the tender grass springing out of the earth by clear shining after rain. Although my house be not so with God, yet he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, ordered in all things and sure. For this is all my salvation and all my desire, although he made it not to grow. As we begin to look this morning at the thoughts and the expressions that are found here in some of the very final and closing words of David, David, the son of Jesse, had a lot of experience in leading. God had chosen him and raised him up and had blessed him to be a great leader among the Lord's people. And I want you to notice that he, he says, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel said, The rock of Israel spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. There's a few things that I want to talk about this morning and in a way of introduction and beginning in our lessons this morning, but eventually I would like to get to this expression that he that ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God. I believe right there is the key. I believe right there is uh, given to us the very formula, uh, the very facet, uh, the, the very essence, the summation of the whole for leadership is he that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of God. Now we know that mortal man, even re regenerated, born again, mortal man, will never be a perfect ruler. Will never uh, be without contradiction. Will never be without mistake. Will never be without faults. Never will be without failures. We know that there is only one ruler that is uh, perfect, that is supreme, that is almighty, that is all powerful, that is pure, that is holy, that always does justly, that never makes an error, 
that never makes a mistake, uh, that His goodness, His very nature uh, keeps Him from faltering and failing. Uh, leaders here fail. But this one that I'm speaking of at this moment, uh, that, that mortal leaders, that we are to pattern uh, our life and to follow the example from God's Word of Almighty God. Now, we're going to fall short of that and we're not going to come up near to that perfection. But I believe uh, that uh, the Lord God Almighty is the perfect example and gives us in His Word uh, the requirements and uh, the ability and the enablement uh, that one should follow after in, in, in order to be a good leader, a respect leader. Uh, it is one that would do just and that would rule in the fear of God. You know it all comes down to fearing God. Now we know that an unregenerate cannot fear God. So if a man is in a leadership position and he is not born in the Spirit of God, if he is a, a, a wicked, wicked uh, individual, uh, there will never be any fear of God before their eyes. But I tell Hey, brothers and sisters, the Bible admonishes uh, God's people, uh, God's regenerated people uh, uh, to fear Him. It's over and over in the Bible. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the summation of it? To fear God and to keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. But in order uh, for a leader to have uh, the re respect of the people and for the people to respect the leader and for the people to look up and acknowledge the leadership of an individual, a person will have to manifest and show forth stability, compassion, uh, and a, a ready mindset uh, that is uh, not after his own uh, doings and his own prosperity and his uh, own getting ahead, but he has the mind of the people at heart. Now we know that the true example uh, of our God that is uh, uh, the ultimate leader, that is the ultimate ruler, if you please, uh, the divine potentate, the sovereign God of all his creation, uh, that he uh, does rule supreme and he will never fail and he will never be unjust, unjust and he will never make a mistake. He will never err. He will never fail. He is perfection personified. And he gives us uh, in his word the teaching uh, that we should use as his people in leadership, in ruler, uh, position, and authority. So when we begin to look at this, notice in verse 3, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spake to me. Here God is referred to as Israel's rock. <clears throat> For the sake of time this morning, I'm not going to go to the scriptures in Deuteronomy. Those, those are some of the, those last discourses, sermons that Moses preached before his uh, uh, death. Uh, and uh, he talks about God as uh, uh, the rock and, and so forth along that line. Uh, uh, but, but I want to look at uh, some other places uh, uh, this morning for just a few moments. Uh, a, a ruler has to be a rock. A ruler has to be steadfast. Uh, a ruler has to uh, uh, stand in conviction that is based upon God's Word. God stands in conviction of Himself, of His own nature that directs Him, uh, uh, that, uh, that He permeates from, uh, that, that He issues forth from His divine nature. The divine nature of God is pure and holy and righteous and just. So therefore, you cannot get anything else out of God or from God but that. Amen. In this sense that we're 
talking about this morning. I want to turn to a verse of Scripture that a lot of times is not uh, used or, or spoken of in talking about God uh, as rock, as strength. But if you remember the very prayer and the very song, remember after Hannah's prayer in 1 Samuel chapter 2, uh, uh, the song that, that Hannah sang of, of thanksgiving and praise unto God uh, when, when she said in verse uh, uh, verse 1 of chapter 2 and Hannah uh, prayed and said my heart rejoiceth in the Lord my horn is exalted in the Lord horn there meaning strength she's talking about her strength is exalted in the Lord my mouth is enlarged. In other words, she, she is smiling uh, uh, even in the face of her enemies because of the strength of the Lord. She can have a smile on her face because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord for there is none besides thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. Notice that uh, from Hannah here. There is no rock. There is no horn. There is no strength. There is no stability like our God. She places God first and foremost as ruler of, the, of all his creation, ruler of the earth, a ruler of the people. But you know God has delegated uh, power to, to individuals, to civil authorities, uh, to civil governments uh, uh, here upon this earth uh, that individuals would rule and individuals would judge among and betwixt uh, and would uh, lead uh, in uh, countries and kingdoms uh, uh, in, in smaller areas and over a smaller population such as states and counties uh, and municipalities. Uh, uh, you can see the example of this uh, whenever Jethro, and, and I believe certainly God approved it uh, and blessed that system uh, there in Genesis uh, when uh, Moses' father-in-law uh, gave him the instruction about putting uh, men over uh, different numbers of people. If you notice in Exodus chapter uh, chapter 18, starting there with verse 13, you're going to find the appointment of judges. What was taking place? Uh, Moses was working from uh, daylight to dawn, if you please. Uh, there was a long line of people uh, that had cases uh, that needed judgment made betwixt them and other individuals over civil matters. And Moses was sitting in judgment, and it was a weariness unto him. And his father-in-law, he saw this. And so when he spake unto Moses uh, concerning this, he said in verse 21 of Exodus chapter 18, Moreover thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Notice that. Notice uh, uh, the different sizes uh, uh, of, of individuals. Uh, uh, and, and so, and I make this in relation and comparison that we can understand of country and state and counties and municipalities uh, where it would be broken down uh, that there would be men uh, that would fear God and that would judge among people and carry on the, the affairs of civil authority uh, that God has invested men with to operate under uh, His Word. You know, Israel was a theocracy. God ruled. And even after uh, kings, uh, even after you get past the people desiring uh, and, and Saul 
Saul, uh, the Benjamite, uh, but then we come to David, uh, who I recognize as the first and proper and rightful uh, uh, king uh, uh, there. Uh, even in that, uh, God was still to be supreme, and David was to recognize. Any ruler is to recognize uh, that they have no power of their own but what God uh, delegates to them by his authority and through that network and system that God has devised uh, for individuals uh, to uh, be judges and, and, uh, and, and be appropriate individuals among people here on earth to keep uh, judicial, uh, to keep civil uh, law and order in the land as God has dictated in his word. But there are requirements for these individuals. And our example is God himself, the ultimate and the supreme ruler. Notice here what the Bible says. When I first read this, we wanted to, to set forth um, the difference in, in the numbers and from uh, the large areas going on down to smaller areas. But I want you to notice the first of this. When he said here, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men such as fear God. So here again is the first qualification. I tell you, if a ruler, if an individual that is in a place of authority to lead a people, whatever size they are, whatever geographical uh, size of the place that they are in and under, I mean, the first requirement uh, is that they should uh, fear the Lord. A God-fearing individual. I tell you that when the wicked, uh, when they are in power, when they are ruling the people, uh, mourn. Uh, uh, it, it is like, uh, even as a real bold, uh, misjudgment, uh, not using uh, wisdom and, and taking the counsel that had been tried and had been proven with the old men of counsel. Uh, and whenever he addressed them after the third day and, and told them, uh, said, my, uh, my finger will be thicker than my father's loin. Uh, and he whipped you with whips and I'll chastise you with scorpions. Uh, uh, that was the wrong words. Uh, and then who's going to follow uh, after that kind of leadership? Uh, who's going to follow after that kind of uh, ruler uh, that would mandate such and, and would speak with such harsh uh, and, 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 and uh, uh, very brassy uh, uh, type words and language, uh, uh, words that uh, uh, had no comfort in them, words that don't have any peace in them, uh, uh, but just cruel words. Uh, I tell you, that's not wisdom uh, of the beginning. Uh, of, the, uh, of wisdom we know and understand is the fear of the Lord. If a person doesn't have uh, uh, that manifestation of wisdom and a heart felt after wisdom uh, uh, and fear of God uh, to rule justly, uh, to be able uh, to be in a, a place. Notice uh, he, he said, uh, Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men. Uh, able men. Ability to do the job that one holds. An able ruler. An able uh, director or leader among people is one that has the ability to do it. Uh, amen. That means that they are able uh, uh, to do it. Uh, uh, meets this requirement. Uh, 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 a person that, that has ability that is uh, uh, has physical uh, uh, the mentality uh, and, and uh, uh, competence uh, and uh, 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 a and, and, uh, stability uh, of, of physical and mental uh, uh, competence uh, uh, to perform and to do uh, the job uh, of the office that they have been put in to. You know, even after a, a leader gets old and physically uh, declines, 
You know, maybe even it could be confined to a wheelchair. But if in their early days, if they exhibited to be a good ruler and manifested uh, the, the physical uh, and, and mental fortitude and courage, and even if they have decline of body, but yet people would still respect them and adhere to them because of the track record and because of the precedent that they had set forth. I'm glad God will never be infirmed. I'm glad that he'll never have any weaknesses. Oh, uh, but he is total, full, complete, nothing lacking. Uh, uh, but yet, uh, if a person fears the Lord and if a person will execute a righteous uh, judgment, then they will be an able person. I, I think about, talks about that uh, person uh, to lead the escape goat there in Leviticus chapter 16, long about verse 20, 21 or so. And, and it uses that language, a fit man. That means that a person uh, had the ability to lead and to take uh, that goat into the wilderness. It would be a man uh, that would have the integrity, the fortitude, uh, the know-how, the whereabouts uh, uh, that would be dependable, uh, uh, that would be able to do the job. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm glad that there was a fit man. Uh, oh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that was totally able uh, to do the job and he did the job and I'm thankful this morning uh, amen that God uh, is fit uh, that God is able uh, and that he has shown and manifested himself over and over and over and if a man will fear God and trust in the Lord and execute uh, through wisdom and do justly then they will be an able man. You know, the scriptures teach us about qualifications. The scripture gives qualifications for elders. The scripture uh, gives qualifications for deacons. There's qualifications in the kingdom of God. There's qualifications in the house of God that has to be met in order for a person to be an able man. To be a fit man. And so, uh, here, Moses was uh, commanded, uh, and uh, uh, here, that, that should look out for, for individuals, men, that would be able, able men, such as fear God. Notice, the first requirement was to fear God. And therefore, I tell you, it was possible then for them to have these other characteristics. Yeah. Is that, is, it was they were uh, then it was possible if they exhibited the fear of God because the very next thing that they would be to, they were to be men of truth. If a person doesn't fear God, they certainly won't be a person of truth. No. I believe that comes right along with it. Yeah. I believe there's got to be a fear of God in order for a person uh, to be men of a uh, truth uh, that holds forth unto the truth that believes that truth is not relative, that believes that truth is historic amen, that believes that truth what is true has always been true and always will be true and that truth never changes that truth does not change with time but it is steadfast and unmovable and that Jesus Christ who said I am the way, the truth and the life, that he is the truth uh, personified and uh, therefore uh, if, it, if men of truth, uh, then men that uh, uh, tell the truth uh, uh, men that do not bear false witness uh, uh, men that will not falsify men that will not compromise, uh, men that will not take uh, the advantage uh, of truth and try to wrangle it and twist it and turn it and, uh, uh, and still try uh, to, to, to hold it uh, to be the truth. Uh, God is not pleased uh, with 
such as that. Uh, uh, but, but men that would be judges, uh, men that would be uh, rulers, men that would be in leadership, they must fear God and they must be uh, men of truth. They must be men that tell the truth, that act the truth. Uh, and then men that believe the truth. Uh, I say men that believe God's precious uh, holy word. Uh, now I know in society and civilization uh, 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 that is getting harder and harder and further and further. Uh, uh, but I tell you when it comes to the house of God uh, these things are certainly uh, not optional. Uh, they're not optional to civil leaders uh, uh, but when you have uh, uh, the, the majority uh, that, that doesn't know, doesn't understand or won't hold uh, to what we realize is the teachings of the Bible uh, 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 then you're at a disadvantage uh, as far as out here in civil government. Uh, oh, but I tell you, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, we're not in any disadvantage when it comes to the house of God. Uh, amen. As we said a lot of times, just any old way won't do. Uh, 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 the falseness, uh, uh, heresy, uh, uh, half-truths, untruths, no matter how folks want to classify them, uh, uh, they just simply won't do. Uh, uh, we've got to be truthful uh, and we've got to tell the truth. Uh, we're not to bear false witness. Uh, 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 this is at the very core. This is at the, the very heart. Uh, how can a, a, a ruler, how can a leader be effective among people when the people have no confidence in them that they are truthful individuals? That they are truthful. Amen. Oh, and then he says, hating covetousness. I want to tell you, brother and sister, covetousness it, it's a problem in our land. It is a problem. It's at the very heart of a lot of our problems with our civil uh, leaders and leadership in our country. Uh, when, uh, when individuals go in office uh, uh, relatively uh, with not a whole lot of this worldly goods and after they're in there 20, 15, uh, 15, 20, 30 years or so and, and, uh, and on uh, and then they're multi-millionaires uh, over and double again and again. Now that tells you something. I want to tell you. And uh, it's because they're covetousness. Uh, they're greedy uh, of uh, uh, filthy Lucre, uh, and, and God warns his ministers uh, uh, not to be uh, covetous, not to be a uh, greedy of filthy lucre. Uh, all of God's people, uh, oh, I tell you, when individuals uh, uh, will do whatever it takes, uh, lie, cheat, steal, uh, uh, to get gain in this world, uh, that is a sin that is wrong before God. And God is not pleased with that. And then over in the New Testament, it talks a lot about covetousness. I tell you, old Baptists used to exclude folks from church from being covetous. And you don't hear much of that anymore, much of that talked about. But there's a precedent and there's a history of that. Oh, we're not to be covetous when we are, when our leaders, our rulers are like that, when they, they won't gain and won't to get gain in their covetousness uh, of uh, gain in order to extort, uh, to lie, cheat, and steal, to do whatever it takes uh, to compromise, uh, to betray. Oh, this is not the leadership. I mean, the qualifications of thus saith the word of the Lord. So there's got to be men of truth, hating covetousness. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. So here's the qualifications for a person that would be considered uh, able to be in that state, in that of that uh, condition. I'm glad that we have the example of God in His Word that teaches us and, and gives us of this. You know, one of the greatest examples of a ruler, greatest example to me of an individual of ruling in affairs and to exhibit uh, judgment over individuals is old brother Joseph. You know, God showed him 
even in his earlier days of how that he would be lifted up and would be in leadership position. God gave him dreams and even of his own family and of course as his brothers hated him and eventually got him sold down into Egypt by merchants that was going down into Egypt. But God was with him and God blessed him and protected him and helped him and of course he was sold into Potiphar's house and it wasn't long till Potiphar had made him a head and ruler in his household. Only Potiphar was, was a morsel and a, a forest ruler over everything else Joseph. Whenever Potiphar's wife uh, told him day after day, lie with me. Uh, what, uh, impressing upon him, tempting him to commit a great wickedness. Uh, uh, over and over and over, uh, his words to her was, uh, 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 your husband, Potiphar, he has made me uh, over everything in his house. Everything is under my power, under my control, except you has he withheld because you are his wife. Uh, uh, how can I do this great weakness? How can I sin against God? Notice the words that he used. Oh, him uh, betraying Potiphar. Betraying that trust. Betraying the confidence that Potiphar had in Joseph to rule uh, in his affairs and, and to take care of his house and be over his servants and all that he owned and all uh, that he had. Oh, uh, this was his mindset, Joseph. This was his focus. How can I do this wickedness? He has this confidence in me. Joseph feared God because he said, uh, how can I sin against God? Oh, he feared the Lord. He was a man of truth. He was a man of integrity. He, he wasn't exhibiting covetousness. Oh, he wasn't trying to line his own pockets. Oh, but he had Potiphar's good in mind. Oh, uh, it, it's just like the United States of America. It's as a great house. And uh, uh, the individuals uh, that are in federal government and, and high up in government, president, vice president, senators, uh, Congress people, right on down the line in those high offices and in those high authority uh, should have the mindset. Uh, oh, the people uh, of the United States, they've entrusted uh, uh, me uh, to rule over them uh, through the Constitution uh, to do right, to do justly. Uh, uh, they're to, to, to guide the house and take care of the house uh, of the United States of America just as Joseph uh, took care of Potiphar's house uh, and felt that it would be a great weakness, uh, that it would be a great sin against God uh, for him uh, to take Potiphar's wife to do that great weakness. Uh, oh, God help us uh, and in our lives uh, oh, uh, uh, that we would say to ourselves uh, how can I do such weakness uh, how can I sin uh, uh, such against God uh, how can I betray confidence uh, how can I betray uh, all the trust uh, uh, that the folks uh, uh, the Lord's people have put uh, in me so uh, when David is going through this uh, the God of Israel said the rock of, of Israel spake to me he that ruleth over men must be just I want you to notice that it's not a consideration it's not an option must must be just ruling in the fear of God Ruling in the fear of God, as I said, God is our great example. Over in Psalms chapter, or the 71st Psalm. The 71st Psalm, which is a prayer for help. And it's particularly a prayer for help in old age. But I want you to notice this here though. Because it's right in connection, it's in harmony with what Hannah was talking about. And talking about God is a rock, God is strength, and peace by strength. In verse 3, 
He said of Psalm 71, Be thou my strong habitation, whereunto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me, for thou art my rock and my fortress. Thou art my rock and my fortress. God who gives peace by His strength. I want you to notice that. Have you heard that expression before? Peace by strength. You hear that. You hear leaders talk about that. I tell you, there's a lot of truth in that. That, that, there, is, that there is peace because of the, ex, the uh, manifestation, the exhibiting of strength, the showing forth of strength, having strength of uh, uh, individuals. I tell you, when individuals and powers and, and, and countries uh, and evil dictators, evil rulers know uh, uh, that uh, another country uh, has strength uh, and have the ability uh, to put them down, to take care of them, if you please, uh, to hold them in checks and in balances, uh, it produces peace by strength. Uh, I tell you, brothers and sisters, we have peace that God gives because He's the rock. Uh, amen. He's our horn, as Hannah said. He is our strength. Uh, he is almighty. Uh, he is the peace giver because uh, He is able and sufficient uh, to do so. Paul remembers those three Hebrew uh, children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, said, O oh, king, we're not careful to answer thee in this. Our God is able. Uh, whether he will deliver us or not, we don't know, but he's able to. Uh, amen. They uh, had peace. How did they have peace? Uh, because they went on to say uh, that he will deliver us out of your hand. Uh, they knew uh, that they were going, uh, they had peace about it because uh, God was their rock uh, and they, they had that confidence. Uh, uh, they had that uh, uh, belief. Uh, uh, that They had that trust. That's faith. <laughs> Amen. Their faith was in God. Uh, their rock. And therefore they had peace. Because whether God delivered them from the fire furnace. Uh, by saving, their, saving them alive. And bringing them out. And restoring them to their natural life. Or. Uh, whether he would take their soul and spirit into heaven and immortal glory, uh, their uh, recitation to it was this. Uh, and God will deliver us out of your hand. We can't lose, King. We're going to win either way uh, because our God is a rock. Our God is strong. Our God gives peace by strength. I tell you, uh, strength, godly strength, uh, it does give peace. Uh, it, it gives fortification. Uh, it gives assurance. Uh, oh, it gives the comfort and the consolation uh, uh, that is needed. Uh, oh, when we trust in the rock uh, that is certainly higher than we are. And I mentioned this, uh, uh, maybe it was last Sunday or Sunday before, uh, uh, but, uh, but I didn't use this verse, but here's the verse when I was, I was talking about... Uh, uh, getting old and, and, uh, and talking about dementia and so forth. But in verse 9 of Psalm 71, he said, Cast me not off uh, in the time of old age. Uh, forsake me not when my strength faileth. Uh, oh, our strength is going to fail. Uh, ruler strength fails. Uh, oh, but if a man uh, fears God, uh, and if a man uh, has walked in truth and integrity, uh, and if a man uh, oh, uh, has uh, uh, not distorted if a man has not cheated uh, to get gain, oh, uh, but has gotten uh, the gain uh, in the proper way uh, through, uh, as the Word of God teaches, and through God's blessings, uh, I tell you, when our strength fails, we can have an inner peace uh, oh, that will pass all understanding. And that peace comes from 
from the Lord. Yes, we live in dark days. Yes, we have leaders that seemingly don't fear God. They don't manifest it if they do. We have those that no doubt are covetous. No doubt those that are not walking in truth and integrity. But brothers and sisters, our trust, our ultimate trust and confidence and strength is not in them. It is in our rock. It, our confidence, our peace is in our horn. Amen. God Almighty, our great help and our great strength. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's a, He is a, a great rock. Uh, you remember the words of the Apostle Paul there to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 10? Remember when he said there in verse 4, when he's talking about the children of Israel and where Israel is a, a warning example, and he's given this example of warning in verse 4, and did all drink the same spiritual drink? For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Now Christ did not turn himself in to a physical rock. That's not what that's talking about. We know there are, there are uh, actual manifestations of, of, the, of the second person of the Godhead, the Word in the Old Testament. Uh, I believe the Word, uh, the second person, the Son of God, uh, was the man by the wall of Jericho that Joshua taught with. I believe uh, that uh, the fourth man in the furnace uh, was a manifestation of the Son of God. Uh, uh, but, but the rock uh, that Moses smote uh, and then the, the rock that he was to speak to uh, but smote again and therefore was a suffer to go in the promised land see Christ only be smitten once uh, he's smitten then there, therefore you can talk to him uh, amen uh, uh, that's the lesson uh, that God was showing because Christ uh, oh, is smitten for his people therefore he is our intercessor therefore he is our uh, uh, great one between us and God. He's our daysman that lays a hand on us and lays a hand on God. He's the betwixt. He's the between. He's the medium. He's the connection. Oh, uh, thank God forevermore. Uh, and we can speak. Amen to him. Oh, but that rock uh, was a, a type of Christ as uh, uh, God provided uh, water that was a life uh, giving uh, water, if you please, sustain their natural life. It was necessary for the life of their animals. It was necessary for their life. I tell you, the rock, the living rock, the Lord Jesus Christ and the truth true, eternal uh, life, the water uh, that he gives uh, oh, uh, is essential. He is essential for our eternal life. Uh, oh, uh, it is in, by, and through uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and because he is that rock uh, of a drink, uh, of that spiritual rock, the spiritual provision of God. Uh, oh, uh, uh, we need to rest uh, in the spiritual provision provision and think upon uh, Christ our rock amen who is our peace who is our rest who is our life who is our hope who is our help amen it is our rock the Lord Jesus Christ is that not what the Apostle Peter also uh, speaking of and we used this some months ago but I'll just refresh your memory there in 1 Peter uh, chapter 2 verse 6 and 7 Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, that means chosen, <laughs> amen. He is the chosen, amen, of God uh, for salvation scheme, for uh, redemption purpose. Uh, he is the elect of God. Uh, he is the right hand of God. Uh, he is the strength of God. Uh, he is 
precious uh, and uh, he that believeth on him shall not be confounded shall not be ashamed unto you therefore which believe he is precious but in them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed the same is made the head of the corner so Christ he is the rock he is the cornerstone he is the elect he is the very chosen of God uh, Christ the elect where else then would his people uh, be chosen to whom else would his people be chosen in he is the elect of God and the, the elect amen out of the human family were chosen and treasured in Christ the apostle Paul said that we were chosen in him before the very foundation of the world why why chosen in him he's that rock and he's unmovable he is stable rulers uh, here upon this earth and we know of those back through uh, the times uh, that God uh, suffered uh, in leadership positions and authority uh, we know uh, what miserable uh, ways uh, and conditions that they imposed upon those that they ruled oh but as God uh, has shown and had taught uh, David uh, concerning the matter concerning uh, the grave situation uh, that uh, he that uh, ruleth over men must be just ruling in the fear of God want to turn to Isaiah chapter 11 this is about our Lord and his ruling in his kingdom the gospel kingdom where he is king of kings and lord of lords notice what Isaiah said he's talking about the righteous reign of the branch of Jesse he says, And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and of the fear of the Lord. Now this is talking about Jesus Christ. This is talking about Jesus Christ. And here it says that the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. I'm not going to take time to turn over and read it, but you can connect this and talk about the seven spirits that are before the throne of God. We know God is one. God is one spirit. Seven. Not talking about a division, but talking about the, uh, the, uh, the, the gift or the uh, characteristic uh, the empowerment and embodiment uh, of the quality that is under consideration. And of course, seven in Scripture is that of a, a number of perfection. And we know that, that God uh, it, it is perfect and complete. But, but notice as he talks about this, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord and shall make him and shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. This is the man Christ Jesus. Yeah. This is the man Christ Jesus and this is what the Lord God would do. Uh, anointing him. He is the anointed. There back in 2 Samuel 23 he talks about the anointed. Amen. Jesus uh, from which uh, the, the, in the Hebrew the, the, the root word coming forth from uh, Messiah the word Hoshua same word Joshua and Hosea but they are in Jesus meaning Savior, Salvation uh, and Christos Christ, He is the Messiah, He is the Savior, the anointed Savior, He is the anointed of the Lord, He took the book and read it from Isaiah and said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me yeah. or oh, He hath anointed me on oh, a priest acceptable 
uh, year of the Lord. Oh, we know there in the Jordan River when he was baptized, uh, when he uh, was uh, manifestly set forth, ordained, and then the Father spoke over uh, him and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the Spirit descended upon him in the form of the dove. I tell you, amen. Uh, the Apostle Peter understood that when he spoke at Cornelius' house and said there in Acts 10, 34 how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost uh, and with power who went about doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him he did it by the power of the Holy Ghost he did it by the anointing the man Christ Jesus uh, he did the signs and miracles and healings uh, amen and manifestly shone forth uh, amen by the Holy Ghost uh, that's why Jesus uh, uh, told them because they kept accusing him of casting out devils by the uh, prince of devils, uh, Beelzebub. Uh, amen. And Jesus said, you can speak a word against the Father, you can speak a word against the Son, but if you speak a word against the Holy Ghost, uh, it's not going to be forgiven you in this world or the world to come. He was saying this world you're standing in and the world that is about to come. Amen. The order of arrangements. You're in this old Jewish world. Uh, amen. Uh, and there's a, a new uh, order coming. Uh, there is a new and living way and you're not going to have part in it. You're not going to have entrance into it. Oh, because you're blaspheming the Holy Ghost. They were speaking against the Holy Ghost. Why? Because God was anointing him with the Holy Ghost and they said he was anointed by the, he was doing what he did by the devil and that was blaspheming the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, our Lord was quick. Amen. A, a, a quick study, if you please. Why? Because he had this endowment. Amen. As a, as a ruler, as a leader, as a person that, that was going in and out among people. He had this spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of of the Lord. It was personified in Him. It was perfect in Him. I know we can't have it in perfection. Uh, we don't. We, we miss the mark. We falter. Uh, we fail. But Christ, uh, amen, He is our example uh, uh, that we look to. And in these things right here, I tell you, uh, amen, a ruler must have these things. Uh, a ruler must have wisdom. He's got to have understanding. He's got to, oh, we need the, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge. Uh, and we must uh, manifest the spirit of the Lord. If a person is born again of the, again of the spirit of God, they have the ability within them because God has worked in them. Yeah. He's worked in them. Amen. And therefore they have the ability oh, to operate out of that. Oh, and to manifest and to show forth. Uh, amen. And to have that fear of God. Yeah. Oh, that a ruler must have. Oh, shall make him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall... And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. You know that old saying, don't believe uh, anything you hear and hype of what you see? You know, there's, 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 a, there's a whole lot in that. Hey Amen. I want to tell you, sometimes don't, things don't seem as they appear. And you can misunderstand. You can, you can uh, mishear. Uh, you can, you know, not perceive. You know, one of the dangerous things there is is trying to read between the lines. I've gotten a lot of trouble through life trying to read between the lines. Anybody know what read? You know what I mean by that? Reading between the lines? Yeah, we misread. I knew a brother one time. That's all he did all the time was trying to read between the lines, and he kept more trouble stirred up than anybody I've ever seen. Uh, trying to read between the lines, make something out of something that wasn't there. Yeah. Amen. So we're not going by what we see. We're not going by and just by what we hear. In other words, we're not, not talking about uh, the, the natural seeing and the natural hearing, but we're talking about uh, the spiritual seeing and the spiritual hearing. That him that hath ear to hear, hear what the Spirit saith. How do we hear? How do we see? Through the instruction, through the teaching, through the revealed, amen, knowledge and wisdom of God's precious Word. Amen. And this is how we've got to rule. This is how we've got to lead. This is how we've got to judge. 
Amen. And, and, and to have good judgment. Good judgment. All right. So, then notice. Have, the Word of God will interpret itself. When he says in verse 3, And shall make of him a quick understanding in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor. <laughs> By what thus saith the word of God, and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. And righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins, the belt round about him that holds his, his, his garment, and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Here's perfection in Christ, the man Christ Jesus, and the attributes, the qualities that he showed and exhibited. Amen. That God did indeed bless him with, anointed by the Spirit of God. Then, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf, and the young lion, and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. What in the world are you talking about, preacher? I know there's a whole lot of God's people here uh, in the quote-unquote religious world that's looking for a day to come of a literal thousand years uh, when they think that that uh, scripture will be fulfilled, and there will be the actual lying down with a lion and a lamb and with a uh, with a calf uh, uh, and, and a, with the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fattened together and a little child shall lead them. I want to tell you in the kingdom of God in the spiritual experience of the kingdom of God I want to tell you our old nature is a is a wolf. Our old nature is a is a lion. Oh, uh, but in that spiritual experience of God's kingdom, uh, 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 we can be at rest, at peace. Uh, uh, our spiritual nature of, of the lamb uh, in the symbolic language and, and the calf and, and, and so forth. Uh, in the spiritual experience of Christ ruling and blessing us and thus ruling over our own nature. Uh, oh, uh, uh, that we can subdue, uh, that the old nature can be subdued in the service of the Lord and in the kingdom of God uh, and both lie down in the sense uh, uh, that the stronger will not prevail over the weaker. There are many things. And I know that there are some and, and way more out in the Armenian world that use all of the Old Testament texts that refer to and look toward a restoration uh, of Zion, of Israel, and so forth. Of a, in a literal context. And I'm not throwing rocks. And that's, that's folks' understanding. That's what they think. But uh, it used to be mine, but uh, I came to see, I've come to see it different. Amen. I believe that all of those things, all of these texts that you can go to in the Old Testament that talks about a restoration, that talks about uh, these things and reigning and ruling. I mean, He's made us kings and priests unto our God. Yeah. I mean, we're to, to rule and to reign now. I mean, to reign over the old flesh. To reign over ourselves that, that our uh, spiritual nature can feel at peace and lie down. Oh, and uh, that these things are come together and fulfilled in the gospel kingdom. Amen. In the church of the Lord uh, Jesus Christ. I trust and hope this morning that these things, these thoughts would be of some blessing, some help to you, and that you would receive from it.